end up being cynical. Greetings and salutations. Welcome sports lovers, race fans and others to another fantastic episode of Dirty Sweat. Hola everybody, welcome to <coughs> where we are. We live in, in our, our new studios. Yeah, in our at studios. Piccolino's down Witkopen Road in Four Ways. Gary, I believe yes. we'll talk about the, the, the man in the room. But the, I believe that this is the place of the finest beer in South Africa and the bestest pizzas ever in the whole world. Are you sure? Uh, of course I'm sure, Gary. Okay, just checking on you. Apparently they tell me, because you know me, uh, beer, uh, I don't drink at all. Yeah. And um, they tell me that the beer is fantastic. This is Piccolino's. It is an awesome place. It's rustic. It's chilled. They make thin base pizzas. You can put a whole lot of stuff and things and they got ice cold beer. And they built us a studio. This is our winter studio. Our summer studio, you will know, is, uh, is a lot, lot brighter. The lighting, they've got a couple of technical issues, but Gary is on the case. And you will notice that it's not just Gary and I, but Mr. Stuart Thompson. Stewie, Welcome and thank you. And re it's fantastic when we have leaders of motorsport in South Africa joining us. And I don't say that lightly. You've been around and welcome. Thank you, Colin. Thanks, Gary. Nice to see you in our studio for a change. Oh, Instead fantastic of me being, to be here. Being in your background. <coughs> yeah. Normally yeah. I've got a camera stuck up the back of some car. Well, I was going to say something else, but it's a you know, fam family show. Gary. Family yeah. show, yeah. So, Stewie, the. Our, our production department. I hope the catering and and transport looked after you, but production has been a little bit slack, and they were supposed to give us some more notes. You will notice my hat, Toyota Gazoo Racing. I am blown away. They won. Look, yes, they won. I think it's a mega achievement. They won. We're talking about Le Mans um, this weekend, most awesomest race in the world. So. Well done to Toyota Gazoo Racing and to to the whole team. Stewie, did you, you you clearly watched it because you you're a man of many interests. Yeah, I did, Colin, and it's a it is as you say a fantastic race. In fact, you know I, I guess the Americans always say that the the Indy 500 is the greatest single race, but I think Le Mans probably certainly rivals that, and I think it's fantastic. It really is. It's it's unbelievable. So I woke up. I leave the, the, the race running and then, you know, you have these long blinks, Gary, where somehow time passes where you just look on the inside of your eyelids. And like at half past three, four o'clock in the morning, yes. there was that Spaniard. What Spaniard? There's only one. Well, the one and only. <laughs> so he was doing amazing things. But just to recap, and last week we discussed a little bit about Lamar and the Pink Pig. And the Pink Pig won. Yes, thank you very much. And next week, we're going to talk about the evolution of how it really became to be what the, the Pink Pig and, and how it got its name. So production came to me today with the download of the Lamar results. There are 248 pages like this. They're about like that. They expect me to read it. I can't read nothing here. All I see is that there's a Nakajima, Bohemi, and a Spaniard at the top. <laughs> and I think it was absolutely awesome. So, but the race was not just about Fernando Alonso. Nakajima put it on pole, and I've got to say that the respect I've got for for Fernando, and I don't know if you saw it, was after qualifying. Yeah. He stood at the background, and he he made sure he was the last guy out of the garage. He stood at the back. It's a bloody media who just who just made it the Fernando show. Well, the media's like that, and unfortunately, sometimes you and I are guilty of the same thing. You know, we just trying, Never, to, get, Gary. We're trying to get trying to get the shot and trying to get the thing that we believe counts. And sometimes, what actually counts is guys like this gentleman here, and our race drivers, and the actual cars. Those are the things that count. You and I are just telling a story. So, just very quickly on the story, they won. Yes, they were the only hybrid car there, but. This is the first time that they, they finished the race. There were a couple of, of anxious moments. There's some gearbox issues on the last lap. Wah, 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 wah. We won't go there. <clears throat> and they won. I think it was fantastic. And they actually raced. Um, 
And then we come to Monday. And the results, these results were provisional. The you typical mean that, you mean those, were the, those were the results of, by Sunday night midnight. The Sunday night, yeah. And then... And then you got the other results on Monday midnight. Yeah, then the Oaks go and start inspecting and checking stuff out. And they find a whole lot of things. Bottom line, a couple of... Stewie, in racing, you always push the limit in the line, don't you? I think that's your job, Colin. You have to. But there is a line. But how grey is that? <laughs> how grey is that line? Well, you know, I think with organisers like at Lamar, the line probably isn't very grey at all. You know, I think as with the Dakar and the you know the ASO that we have both seen in operation, mm. you know, it's 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 certainly not a, a clubby day at Midvale. So yeah. the rules are the rules, and uh, you have to be quite clever to get away with uh, any sort of transgression whatsoever. So just to quickly give you the, the great news that the, the Oricas that were run by TDS, they were kicked out, excluded, cancelled. They won and they came fourth. And, well, Moses wasn't involved, but they won and they came <laughs> fourth. And they were kicked out because they had a machined part that was added into the refueling rig, which saved them six to seven seconds per pit stop. And if we go down the, the results here, and these, if you can sort of see, it's... I so can't even. <laughs> Gary, yeah. can you talk to production and get them to make it? The, the standard is 18 font, nothing smaller. Bottom line, they made 34 pit stops. And if you're saving five seconds, you've done the maths in your head already, it's a lot of time. And the other thing is that if you've got a, if you make a rule and yeah. you've got to be a good policeman and kick people out if they transgress. Or, Indeed. Are you happy with that? For sure. If you cheat, you get kicked out. And so there are two porkers of great success at Lamar. The one is the, the, the GT3 car that led from the beginning, and the other is Juan Pablo Montoya who now comes onto the three. Mr. Montoya, you're my hero. I'm sorry for calling you a porker, but hey, there's a little bit too many hamburgers in the stomach. But awesome drive. I thought, what did you think of, of Montoya? Well, he obviously made a fairly serious uh, blubs. And, and, you know, I guess he's been there and done that, and I guess you'd like to think that his ego is fairly well under control, and he was happy to admit that he'd made a mistake. I mean, I think his, his own description was that he ran out of talent, of which there I, must I, be a significant amount. I find so, that quite amazing yeah. that a guy of his yeah. stature of, and, and skill yes. can just be the plain oak who says, yeah. I ran out of talent. Yeah. But the Porsche curves caught a lot of people out this um, yeah, this race, and I wonder if move. You know, they made a whole lot of changes to Porsche curves. They moved barriers yeah. back and all that sort of thing. The penalty for exceeding track limits should be instant and severe. Yes. Do you think maybe they they overdid this whole safety thing, Stu? It's always a very difficult question, Colin, and, and I think it was put to Chris Amon, the great New Zealander, shortly before he died, and he said, you know, when we raced, the track limits were stone walls and trees, and no one went into those. So it's always difficult when there's an artificial limit. And, you know, I guess, again, as with the technical side of it, rules are rules. But racing drivers being racing drivers, if they can gain a, even a perceived advantage, they're going to do their damnedest, and that is also their job. So, yeah. very, very difficult. I think it's the usual story. You need to know, the rules need to be cast in stone, there needs to be no grey area, and everyone need, needs to know what they can and can't do. I'm a great fan of putting big fat curbs, so that if you go off the track limits, you spear into the distance and get go off safely. Because, mm. let me just put this again clearly, nobody, I certainly do not wish harm to anybody in a racing car. It is a... Oh, a risky enough endeavor that we, you don't want to create artificial danger. But you, nobody, you know, at Monaco, nobody goes over the white line because well, there's can't. a barrier. Yeah. No, because, yeah. well, not only that, if they go too far over the white line, they end up in the water. And it's like Parabolica. Mm. They now, anyway, we're not going to go there. Let's, the butterflies are, are, are tweeting. Yes, just before you go to the next point, just like to say hi to everybody. Have we got yeah. some... 
you know, birth, birthday mom is online. Can we sing happy birthday? Happy yeah. birthday, dear happy Kelvin. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, dear Kelvin. Happy birthday, dear Kelvin. Kelvin. Happy, happy birthday to you. Kelvin van der Linde's birthday, absolutely freaking awesome. We celebrate our world-class racing drivers. Gary, is he like, he's about 16 now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it depends. Depends with he's going backwards or forwards, but they're doing well. But I just want to say hi to Bernadine van der Linde. She's online watching us. Bernadine, Mom, well done. You I'm raise good kids. You raise them fast. Thank you. I'm trying to get him to behave. Bobby Nokia, thank you very much for those kind words, telling us we have a great show and you appreciate everything we do. Brett Garland, welcome to you. Your friend George Fouchier is watching us, so behave yourself. Brother. Okay. Um, Segan, nice having you with us. Stefan, Michael Walk, all of you guys, thanks very much for joining us. And I think it's time to get back on. Gary, is that... Show. Are we up to 150,000 viewers already? Uh, 149,000. Uh, absolutely awesome. Right, so that's the past. It's history, it's gone. But I want to do the pink pig next year, next week, because it's okay. fantastic. But, but there's something very important why we discuss <coughs> that first. Why, Gary? Butterflies, sorry. Because it brings us to the new butterflies. Now, for those of <gasps> you who don't know what butterflies we have, we have butterflies that fly around rooms dropping rumors. What did you call it? No, it's not a rumor. What did These you call, are what did you call that, that thing that No, 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 no. That was... The pigeon poo. No, the, the shit... I mean, the poo fairy... <laughs> poo fairy. Uh, the poo fairy go. is a random thing. So, Gary. Yes. We have known for a while, or we have suspected for a while. Yes. And you and I love GT3 racing. Yes. It's the bestest racing in the yeah. entire world. All the manufacturers of significance, even Geely, have got a car. Even... Geely. Gary, don't go okay. there. But anyway... All right. So all significant motor manufacturers in the world have got GT3 cars. This is the international playground of motor manufacturers to swing their... What do they swing, Stewie? Their technical competence. Car. Their technical competence. I, <laughs> I Stewie, love it. I didn't know you had that in and you. You're a man of, of few words, <laughs> but, but great wisdom. So I have thought... And About. I had from one source yes. that there is definitely a round of a Blanc pain GT3 Endurance Series at Kyle Army next year. Then, so I've got to shut my mouth because this show, yes. Stu, is only factual. Yeah. We don't make rumors, we don't no. do nothing. But this morning there were uh, two other independent sources, impeccable sources. You came back to me and, are and you confirmed. Trying, are you trying to tell me when those cars with the big L is coming in? You mean a Monteplas by land car? No. Alexis. No, no, no. I'm saying that there's a okay. definite round of the Blanc Pain GT3 race at Kyle Army. It's going to, I think. Yeah. Now, I tried to phone people who were able to confirm. You know, as so called journalists say, sources say, we try, I tried. Yes. And? <laughs> they didn't answer the phone call, which made it even more suspicious. Do you think they saw your name? Yeah. Anyway, he, he, does ha he does have my name on his phone. You should have gone in gone speaking No, he does have my name on his phone. Number, anyway, <laughs> so I'm putting it out there. I am so happy. Yes. Blanc Pain Endurance Series, Kyle Army, I think 1,000 kilometers next year. Freaking awesome. Now, BMW, and those of you who know BMW, talk to the right people. We need an M8. You need to start testing here so that you can understand South Africa. Yes. Um, anybody who's got any, I did send a message to the chief rocket scientist of motor rocket scientists in South Africa, and he said to me that, and but I assume that he was jesting that he would look at bringing a, a, a Lexus. I asked for a blue one, <laughs> but I assume he was there. anyway. So that's that. Yes, but besides that. Oh, there's other good news. Yes, there is fantastic good news. Gary, this is a good day. Do you know, hold on, hold on. Before you go there, whoa. Tomorrow is the 21st of June. It is the winter solstice. On Friday, guys, prepare yourself. Get the shorts and the t-shirts out. Summer, we are downhill all the way. Winter is over on Friday. It's still f freezing today, but winter's over. Now, you, yes. Gary. Hi to Henny Krunenvall. Great having you with us. Henny van der Linde, remember what we've just said. We want to see you 
organizing a GT3. I yeah, have no idea what it's going to be. They owe us still. Well, somebody's got to make Sean. the contact so we can go and sit in that workshop and do what we need to do. We need to go and sit in Sean's workshop, have a, have a bit of a chat here. So the great news is that next year, there's a nine hour of... Who told you that? Sources. Sources. Right. The man at the top told me that next year, on the plan, there's the a nine, nine hour, hour race. In the bag. Yes. This is for the South African Endurance Series. That's right. We've just come back from the SWAT Corps dizzy race. Mm. The reason they're dizzy, and we're going to talk to Stu about that just now. So next year, there definitely is the nine hour race. Did somebody say the K word, I mean the Kailami word, or whatever? Anyway. Uh, at this stage, can't tell you which track it's at because it's sort of provisional, but it's, it's going to be at a track <coughs> with a K in it. So listen to this. So all of those of you that understand the production K in it, you work it out. We, we have a technical and a production department and a research department to do amazing work. Guys, thank you very much. By the way, that new technical appy of yours firing is useless. I noticed. And he's grumpy. Yes. And anyway, so if you want to come and work with us and join the finest motor racing show in South Africa, drop us a line. There's somewhere there's comments and stuff and, and the technical department will pick it. So GD3 cars, just listen to this. Aston Martin, Audi, Bentley. Hello, Mr. Fenter. Um, BMW, you know who we're talking about. Ferrari, Jaguar. Now, it's the old Jag, but there's a new Jag and all the rest of it. And, yeah. Oh, and Aston Martin need a new brake on the, the balance of performance. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Gary, they Whatever. told me to read it in alphabetical order. And I don't know why they call it OCD. It's O... C OCD, CDO. That that no, it's CDO. The, the letters have got to be in row. Lamborghini, Lexus. Hello, Glenn. McLaren. Hello, Justin. How's it? Bring them in. Nissan. Who do we need for Nissan? He's gone to Botswana now, Mr. Redline. Terence Marsh. Hello, Terence. GT3. C. Yeah. Mercedes AMG. Who can make that happen? Clint Weston. Clint, Clint. Make, make some AMG stuff happen. Boy, AMG, we need one of those and then in this country. We've got to have a pink porker. Hello, Toby. Right, so <laughs> there should be the normal Blanc Pain runs from. March to September, 50 cars, it's also lacquer, you buy tickets online, it ends up at about, I don't know, 500 bucks for a general admission ticket, so it's cheap as chips, it's about three beers at other places, 500 bucks but as if as you as come, as in US dollars? No, it's South African rent, but if, if you come to Piccolino's on Witkopen Road, with the finest beer and pizzas <laughs> in the world, Gary, we've got a commercial deal, at last, they built us our studio, we've got to be grateful for these yes. guys. So just, uh, just before you go, just uh, a nice little shout out to uh, Sean uh, Fasfeld. I like your idea there. Yes, please. Fernando Grafea. Good to hear from my, my friend. Long time no see, but uh, the, now you know what I do for a living. Sometime. <laughs> Caroline Wood. Yeah, we know Kingsley Wood. Um, and I hope he's... Uh, watching us because Kingsley you need to build one of those fancy cars so we need to get race. a proper engine yeah. in that thing and all the rest of it and then yeah. it can go fast and then get the little campus in it and and he can have fun That's right. oh and by the way yes in the reason we so just so everybody knows that I'm we this enormous show and our great follower and the, and the production team and everybody else we're so happy about GT3 racing yes. is we've got a whole bunch of South Africans in it Sheldon and Kelvin van der Linde the kids are doing Frankly, amazing work. Stewie, can you imagine having kids like that? In your class? I guess I can imagine it, Colin. I'd be very proud if my kids turn out like that. But, uh, yeah, they, they, they are. No, I, mean, I, think, I, think you, I, think, I think he actually meant it in oh, your what, race as, team. as racing drivers? Yeah, yeah. No, well, that would be absolute paradise. Notwithstanding the ones we already have. But um, Oh, nice no, recovery no, there. No, indeed, I think they're absolutely world no, class, can you imagine which is him fantastic. Running, can you imagine him running two teams? One for the guys that are currently there, and one for the two Fonda Lindas, and maybe even a, a, a yeah, throwing, he, throwing a Pepe in there. But he yeah. doesn't Because Pepe's do got to get <laughs> Calvin arrest, if you know me. He doesn't do work with um, Audi, do you? Not yet. Right, so we've got the shoulder, the two <laughs> funnel and we've got Adrian Zaug. Remember Adrian Zaug from A1 um, GP? Yes. Um, he races under the South African flag. They're running the old XK, whatever, Jag Jag thingy. That's and, right. and that thing runs at the front. And, of course, Jordan Pepper in the Bentley. But 
Then there's another That's one. That's that. There's another guy from Cape Town, and I can't think of his first name. I think his surname You're is You're thinking Perrell. of David Perrell. David yes. Perrell. I, I, my understanding is that he races in a slightly lower tier to the, the four yeah. mentioned, but also fantastic. But I mean, he's a, done guy, a, a guy from South African over there, yeah, and the tier he's has. racing in, yeah. he's, he's in the top of that yeah. tier. So, David Perrell, keep it up. And there was, there was one South African at Lamar, and production... They don't take my Alzheimer's disease into account, and they didn't give me the notes. Yes. But he runs a Ferrari. He, at the moment, runs out of an American flag. What's the beeping going on, Gary? Technical, it sounds like it's not ticking, at least. No, it's not us. Okay, thank you. Oh, I, we get nervous. We live in Joburg. Anyway, Stu, enough rambling about Hang stuff. Hang on, you were talking about somebody. You just yeah, no, I can't remember his name, and production screwed up. Well, if you carry on, I might help you. And he runs a, he Ferrari, a Ferrari. And he was in. I watched Lamar. Three years ago. Mm. He ran Lamar. I thought it was this year, Gary. No, he didn't run this year. Production. Watch it. Three years ago, he ran Lamar. He is the ex big boy at Max Steel. Yeah. And for the love of me, I cannot remember his name. I'm glad I'm not the only one. No, you see, but, but you know production should about. give us an answer. But I know, so we had South Africans do. Besides, not only that, the guy that's online with us has run more Lamar than Georgie. any other South African ever did. He's raced 13, been there 18 times, to had some. And, and the first time I went there, I think he was like 12 or something. Um, amazing racing. But we've been rude to our guest. Yes. Now Stuart, the head honcho, the, ma the team principal of W. CT Racing. Correct. Stuart, thanks for joining us again. You've come a long way. Let's just catch up with what you're doing at the moment. you running a Janetta G57. Give us the background and tell us. So, what is it that you do, Stu? Well, the, the G57, Colin, is, a, I guess, a bit of a busman's holiday for us in that we, at the end of last year, we decided to withdraw from circuit racing we were involved with Volkswagen and their GDC team and focus on our on our local off-road and Dakar cars for export primarily just hold so, that thought because there are two uh, factory manufacturers in South Africa one is Toyota Gazoo Racing South Africa headed up by Glen Hall and the other is Renault Sport the cars that are built and contracted out of Paris for Renault Sport <coughs> And the, all the words that go with They're it. By this, this I've got. You're the man. Yeah. Yeah. And don't be modest about it. This is a mega achievement. Well, thank you, Colin. I mean, it, for sure, it's not nearly at the same level as Glenn and his team, but it's, it has been a great relationship. We've done four Dakars with them. Um, the cars, as you say, were commissioned by Renault Sport in, in France, and then run by Renault Sport Argentina, which is. Certainly by our standards, a massive organisation. And you've got a great relationship <laughs> with um, Renault Sport Argentina, haven't you? We have. But, you know, the Argentinians, I suppose, without wanting to offend anyone, are, I think, a little bit tempestuous by nature. There's, you know, there's, there's the old joke that uh, the favourite way for an Argentinian to commit suicide is to jump off his own ego. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> For sure, that you know that, that bears out our experience with them. But because a couple been a of times I years. saw you in Argentina, you were you were under pressure. I was going to say yeah. anything grumpy, but you were under. Well, let's just say under pressure. Yeah, and it's always difficult, you know. You, you're there without your full team, and um, I guess I understand it completely when the shoes on the other foot. But if something goes wrong, it's your fault, and if nothing goes wrong, it's they're tough. fantastic, yeah. which is. But the drivers and the team, you know, they, they're a very close-knit team. The, the main driver is, a, is an Argentinian hero called Emi Spataro, who served his apprenticeship in Europe. He did a couple of Formula 3000 races. Okay. And, uh, you know, a, a real folk hero. So, you know, you're certainly in the spot. Alas Senna. Well, and, uh, and you know, we yeah, think, Gary... I'm talking about in the off-road. Yeah, <coughs> yeah, 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 we so. think that we are great supporters of motorsport. And just... But I thought you and I were. Yeah, but there's only two of us. There's <laughs> two million Argentinians. They're crazy, eh? It's wild. I mean, in, in a service park in the middle of nowhere, at two in the morning, they'll be queuing 
hanging on the fence 10 deep to get a glimpse of Spatara. Really? So it's, I mean, and Colin, Colin would have, and, yeah. and see. Yeah, and if he walks to the fence and starts giving autographs, it's, it's, it's like a rock concert. It's, <laughs> it, 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 it's crazy. It's something that I don't think we can comprehend as South Africans. Where do these people come from, though? I mean, you're sitting in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah, you spend the whole day, you see nobody, and suddenly they just there. Yeah. But they, Gary, they, they car mad and they sports mad. Okay. And, you know, certainly in Argentina, they have a, a series called Turismo Carretera, which is a, a very old fashioned in some ways formula, but it's second only to football in the country as a, oh, in really? terms of popularity. Amazing. Uh, so, um, Renault, let's, let's just stick with um, the, the Dakar cars. Renault, are you going forward next year with them? We don't know, Colin. Uh, you know, for them, a big issue is that the Dakar isn't going back to Argentina. Yeah. All the budget comes out of Renault Argentina. So yeah. at the moment, it's not looking positive, to be honest. But uh, For those of you who missed it, there was a whole <coughs> bunch of, of discussions. And the end result of the discussions is that Dakar 2019 will run solely in Peru. It is Peru. It is Peru. Yeah. Sorry. I, uh, um, which is great and not great. But anyway, it is what it is. I we think, just going to go it, with it. It will be a very tough race. Of I mean, course, it'll the be stages tough. we had in Peru this year were were very, very demanding. Yeah. But I suppose the flip side is it does take away a bit of the marathon adventure sure. and component of the Dakar. Apparently, there were talks of um, the ASO visiting South Africa and having extensive looks at Botswana, Namibia those areas yeah i think there has been a fair bit of legwork done by the aso and and you know i'm sure as you guys know we have a, a massive champion in the in the form of richard schilling who yeah. who i think would love to see a, a big event come back to to africa in general sure. and southern africa in particular that'd be great but, if you can pull it off eh? yeah. but you need government money to make it happen and i think that's why the the rest of the country's pulled out okay so there's dakar you yeah. you had two anasis's horribilises mega horrible with a gdc car um what is it about those cars that make them kind of tricky to to run if that's well, the right. Colin, I mean, maybe maybe they were just tricky for us to run because certainly, you know, Michael Stephen and his team seem to be okay at it, and, yeah. and certainly Vic and, and the BMW guys do sure. a good job. But yeah, we certainly couldn't couldn't get on top. You of didn't it. enjoy that time, eh? I didn't enjoy it. Um, you know, from a from a personal perspective, I found the the rules to be a little bit too uh, amorphous for my liking. Um, and in what way? Well, you know, and, and what do you mean by amorphous? I guess, in essence, for what, in terms of our skill sets, I guess we like to think of ourselves as, as chassis people. Yeah. And uh, GTC, in my opinion, has become primarily a tuning and an engine, engine tuning yeah, formula. Yeah. Engine management. Yeah. So that didn't suit us, and and I have to say, I guess, as some form of defence, that it was not what we signed up for when we punted for the business and we're lucky enough to be to be given the business by micro and Volkswagen because that's a major um, honor to for sure it, 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 we were run, very, a, run we, a factory Volkswagen team yeah, anywhere in the world yeah we were very excited about it and it and it remains a huge disappointment that we couldn't do it justice but when we signed up the the engine rules were going to be cast in stone with e locked ECUs and if that had come to pass, I would like to think that we would have been able to hold our own at the very least. But that's not yeah. the way it, it, it transpired. And that, you know, I guess made it uh, a little bit unsuited to, to our skill sets. Let's go. But moving on from that. Okay, go no, no, go there, go Gary. I, I was going to. I know he's going to go and play in the dust this weekend. Yes. Well, that's mm. part of looking forward is the. Yeah. And I've got to get the correct terminology. Well, you get a sandcastle. <laughs> you know, the, I, have you got your back in Spain? I hope already? I don't have time for that, Gary. <laughs> Stuart's leaving tomorrow to go to the Toyota Kalahari Botswana 1000 Desert Race, which is the only marathon race in the South African um, off road cross, cross country, country so racing yeah. championship. Yeah, South African yeah. cross country. Yeah. Championship. It's a two day event, 1000 kilometers, couple of laps. What makes this such a mega event? 
I think for a start, Colin, it's, it's probably the only event in South Africa that is supported passionately. The, the locals <clears throat> love it. As you said that, mm. I was thinking um, Argentina mm. and Botswana. Yeah. The, the, it's run in mm. uh, South is. Botswana around the Juaneng area. Yeah. And people come out from everywhere and go absolutely ape. Yeah, they do. They, they are really ape passionate. Ape RP... What is it? RP... Well, they've had... They've and and Hannes was one of their They've had a few heroes. favorites over the years. Yeah. You know, Hannes was an absolute mm. hero there. Um, I think towards the end of his... his Career. Anthony had assumed that mantle, and um, they are. They they are enthusiastic. They're knowledgeable, and they they turn out in their droves. I mean, for them, it's a it's a three year part, a three day well, party. Yeah, and I think I think it's the second biggest sport spectating event in Botswana. Yeah, if not the biggest, Gary. Really? And, yeah, I th and um, it, it is. It's a massive event. And maybe that's something that we need to look at. That the passion. And the hunger and yeah. the joy for an event comes from it's one event a year. That's right. They look forward to it the whole year, mm. like Le Mans, mm. and it becomes a mega, mega thing, mm. as opposed to some of the rugby games that go on yeah. 97. Now, how many cars are you running? You, you're taking some cars up there and you're running cars? Yeah, we, we are directly running two. We've which got, which uh, two, Stu? We've got the Atlas Copco Hilux for Gary Berthold and Jeff Minnett. And then we've got Henny de Klerk and Jarpie Badenhorst in a, in a Treasury One Amarok. The, Is that the, Am the Amarok they raced in? in yeah, indeed. It's, it's in, just in Dakar. It's come back from the Dakar. We've freshened it up. And uh, What were the things that were most worn out from Dakar? She was calling it... Everything. Uh, <laughs> e e everything was no, pretty no, worn out. Yeah. Um, I want to just give, give us some specifics. When you, you bring the car back and you know that they're... You know, what wears out in these things? You know, all of the components are, are fairly tried and tested and we've got life expectancies for them. So, you know, the drive shafts, the front diff, the rear diff, the gearbox, all of those components, you pretty much know that after X number of Ks, they're going to need refreshing. So that's fairly simple. You know, the, the, I guess the thing that isn't as cut and dried is the, the fatigue of parts, the fabricated parts, the chassis suspension parts, etc which, you know, is pretty much on condition. And and also dependent largely on how much punishment the car takes. Sure, sure. You know, it's, and, uh, and how well did they look up? It's a horrible thing to ask, but you get drivers who are gentle or, or more kinder to cars than than others who are, no, are rougher on cars. Indeed. I mean, a good example is, is, is Stefan Peterhansel was the, you know, he, he was the only one who could bring the first iteration of the Peugeot through the event. Yeah. So, you know, it's... You do. I mean, in, in our particular case with Henny and Gerard Skitter, I think they did an absolutely fantastic job. This was their first Dakar. They finished it. Yeah. They didn't yeah. crash too badly. No. They, no. they came home. There was no blood spilt. Fantastic. I mean, they had a, they had a wobble in one of the pre-event uh, warm-ups. They managed to roll the car there. But, you know, I think that was perhaps a, a good thing in that they got it out of their systems. Yeah. Um, and there were a few close calls. Sure. But, uh, you know, that's the nature of the event, Gary. It's, you know, it's thousands the, of kilometers. The faster you go, the more close calls you yeah, have, as long yeah. as they're close and not, not and, actual you know, calls. For the two of them, and, and I must say our team, led by Justin Allen, who ran the car, mm. it was fantastic. They brought it home and, you know, we're, we're lucky enough to win the Rookie of the Year. Well, not lucky enough, you have to be there to win it. But, now, but it was fantastic to, to have done that. Now, this weekend's event has got significance for you and, and particularly for them. Because didn't they win the, the the road to Dakar two years ago? They didn't. No, they won it last year. Well, it was last year. Yeah, which, so which, for, as part of Dakar and getting more people involved in Dakar, they selected events throughout the world. And if you win that section, if you enter the, the, the road to Dakar and you win it, you get your entry and transport, is it? Com yeah, um, it paid for. Basically, you get... A VIP pa um, pass straight into into Dakar. Yeah. So it's an important thing, and that's on on the cards again. again this, this it is. Week. I think I think Toyota have picked up the tab for that, which is fantastic. And um, yeah, Henny won that last year, and I must say, I think it probably it probably swung him into committing for the event. Okay. You know, I think mm -hmm. he was teetering, and without winning that, it, he, he might not have done it. So, for sure, you know, winning the 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 Dakar Challenge. That's, that's you know? a big thing. And 
Stu, you just mentioned now Toyota, and I think that in a lot of ways we don't really appreciate the the background work. See, they're busy filming a, another contraceptive commercial yep. here, Gary. Yes. Can we can we talk to our location people? We've got this new studio, <laughs> and can we get like exclusive use and get these contraceptive people out of here? But I don't think that we really appreciate the <laughs> the the work and support both emotionally, technically, and financial that yeah. Toyota put into racing in South Africa, off-road racing. Yeah, that's that's absolutely fair comment, Colin. I mean, in our in our case, our cars use a lot of haul speed components, and I think, quite frankly, without that pool of parts and without um, access to them, we wouldn't be able to build the cars that we do. You know, and you're not the only ones who, who use a lot of parts no, from them? No, no, not at all. And uh, they're world-class parts. They, you know, Glenn offers his, Glenn and his team offer, you know, their wealth of experience, yeah. and that's certainly... And, and he'll come with, if you've got an issue, he's very open to discussing technically... Yeah, he a is. Solution. He is. He's, um, yeah, he's inspirational, so just, I guess. Just before we go on, <coughs> people are asking a couple of questions. We got here from one from Michael Walk. He wants to know what does a campaign cost to go to that one? Well, Gary, if you were that way inclined, you could go and rent a mini from Sven Quant, <laughs> and uh, you could arrive and drive for in the region of 800,000 euro. Okay. Um, I'm trying to do the sums, but. The wheels got stuck when Mul I got to multi multiplied by yeah, probably yeah. 12 million rand. Or something like that. <laughs> sure. So, so to do it with a, a top team like Overdrive or South Racing, I would imagine you probably just under half of that on a purely arrive and drive level. You know, without knowing the last rand and cent, I think Henny's campaign probably cost you know 60 percent of the of the lower figure. But that's okay. with him owning the car. And, and oh, running okay. it with a local team. So the other guys are talking about arriving there. Yeah. You, yeah. In other words, you're buying a seat, and yeah. the seat only lasts for the length of the deck off. For sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, look, it's, motor racing has never been a cheap sport. It's not, and it's not for sissies. But I want to go back. This is now, and you're running. Well, let's just finish with now, and then we'll go back to history. You're running the G57 for Simon Murray. Mm. What's that like to run? It's a, it's a nice car, Colin, you know, and it's a, it's a car that's been developed by Janetta with a view to it being a, a fairly easy customer car to run. So with that in mind, it's got a fairly moderately tuned Chev LS engine out of a Corvette. Six, six litre, Yeah, oh, six, six and a bit litre, I think six litre, 500 odd horsepower. Um, so straight away, when you compare it to a true Lamar type car, either a, a P1 or a P2, you can take all the the powertrain finickiness out of it, which is nice. Um, and the car is, is, is well engineered, so it's straightforward to run. What's it like to stick back together with duct tape, rivets and aluminium? Well, that's, that's not ideal, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, did it, yeah. after the crash and qualifying, oh, for sure. it, was, it, may, it was, the work you guys did to bring it back was absolutely fantastic. And just to stick to the... the the current thing it's not one absolutely bulletproof and you had a couple of issues last 15 20 minutes of the the alfa romeo 500 at swat corps two weeks ago yeah yeah we did have a few issues you know i think both talk us through exactly i saw it from the outside mm. that the lights were going off there was a lot of recycling going on i got it from a very reliable inside source that the you told me that Oh, don't worry, we're managing the problem. But now you can you can talk about it. But the very reliable inside source um, said that there was a lot of recycling going on and trying to, to get it back on. Talk us through exactly what happened, the details, please. There was only one issue, one primary issue. And apart from all the usual niggles after a long run, yeah. like, you know, the, the brakes were getting near the end of their lifespan and you know so that simon had to manage simon did the last stint mm. in the in the dark gavin did a fantastic stint in the middle of the race um so the the brakes you know simon the brakes were a little bit different when he got into the car as when he'd last driven yeah. the car a couple of hours before mm. so but that you know fairly minor the the big problem or the only problem that we that we had with the car is that um we had falling oil pressure 
So that had to be managed. And again, you know, that was quite a difficult scenario for Simon to manage, given that it was in the dark. Mm -hmm. You know, the circuit inevitably is quite slippery towards the end of a long race like that. And um, the one way that Gavin had, had, had worked out that it was easier to manage was to run first gear in the, in the hairpin in turn two. Okay. Okay. The problem with running first gear is it's a little bit more difficult to select than second, which would probably be your natural choice. So because Simon was nursing and the hold car... On. When you say difficult to select, not so much from a pull the paddle, but from a balance of the car no, as you're no, turning it in. No, not physically in terms of pulling the paddle, just that you have to request the gear at the right time. Yeah. And if you don't select first, the car can select a, a neutral. So that okay. happened a few times. So it's actually, you know, quite finicky to do. And the first time it happened, it was obviously, yeah. you, you know, a, a, a bit of a stressful moment. And hence all the recycling that, that you might have seen from the outside. But I, I think once we sussed out and once Gavin had given us his input of what he'd been doing, it was fairly easy to manage. You have a very close relationship with um, Gavin um, that's gone on for years. And you rate him highly? I do. You know, Colin, I, th I think he's fantastic. He's... Um, He's experienced on the world stage. I think, you know, if you look at his career, he's always been one of the top South Africans. Isn't he's, he also, sorry to interrupt, isn't he also, he has a world title to his name. He has a, a Rotax yeah, a Max world title, world title world to his title name. World title is world title. No, sure, he does. And, you know, I think in, in karting he was absolutely world class. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he, he, he went a long way through the mill in, in international single-seater racing and ended up winning the the... LM or the Lamar series crown. Yeah. That's which, right. which and he drove the, the South African A1 GP car yeah. for yeah. Mike Carroll's team. And then obviously as well, you know, we had a very successful time with his older boot and um, Mark. Yeah, and that, you know, that was really a, a, a really a fantastic time for us in yeah. the, that was, the You ran Mark in the S2000 Ford yeah. Rally car. Yeah. Talk us through, you know, the how expensive is it to run one of those cars? The Super 2000 Rally car. Yeah, it's wild. It's what massively is wild? expensive. Colin, it um, it makes a GT3 car look cheap. So really? uh, yeah, they they were very expensive. But you know, having said that, you get what you pay for. And we were running a the fast car, M Sport built car. We got a car off the shelf that allowed us to compete successfully with mm. with the might of Toyota, mm. and um, you can't fault it. Just, just on that, sorry to interrupt mm. you, just on that, as recently as last year, um, Mark was going to have a go at the WRX. Now, yes. I'm, I'm talking specifically about the WRX cars. Yeah. The S2000 WRX, are they similar type of things, or are they completely different issues altogether? And I'm only mm. mentioning that because that's where a lot of people that follow what we do mm. will understand where Mark was mm. in the WRX, because we gave it a bit of exposure. Mm. No, Gary, they, they're actually completely different. Oh, okay. You know, they, they're similar in that they have four wheels and, and body weight. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> they give trouble. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, in other words, you couldn't take an S2000 and put it no. in WRX. No. Okay. No. That's so, also that question that somebody our, asked me a bit earlier. Our production department is winding us up about the, the time. Um, but there are a couple of things. I don't want to... They, I could sit and carry on and there's lots of things I want to try and pull out of your, your brain. What is the most rewarding car that, that you've worked with, that you've run, that you've, yeah, that you've worked with? I guess as a, as a youngster, I was a, a mechanic on a Formula 3000 car, which, which you one? Know, a, a Reynard. Um, yeah, in South Africa, no, no, international. No, in the UK. Okay. And at that time, the car Which team were, was that for? I, I worked for a, a, an ex Rhodesian called Fred Goddard, and we were running a South African guy called Werner Luckberger. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that was really nice. It was, the car was fantastic. I think at that time, the sort of top Formula 3000 time would have squeaked onto the back of a Grand Prix grid. So, sure. a serious motor car. Mm. So, I guess in one way, that, you know, that was the ultimate race car I've worked on. What, what made it so re um, rewarding? Was it that it, the car reacted to what you wanted, it to, the, the changes you made, or was it just the, the fact that you were working on a, a precision bit of great engineering? Yeah, Colin, I, I guess it's a pure racing car, and, and certainly I've grown up and been brought up to believe that a racing car is a single-seater. So, you know, obviously the way, I guess, our, our company's gone, um, I've become very fond of 
rallying and, and cross-country racing. And, you know, I certainly think... The furthest cars, things from single No, seated. sure, but, you know, having said <coughs> that, a cross-country racing car is still a purpose-built racing yeah, car sure. without compromise. Mm. And certainly the cars that we build that, you know, that are HIM designs, I'm, I'm very, very proud of. And uh, they're fantastic. Uh, but, you know, I guess in an ideal world, the ultimate racing car is still a, a single-seater. Yeah. In case I missed it, and if I, if I missed it, I do apologise. This weekend you're running two cars, did you? discuss what cars he was running up in yeah you were sorting out the tv ad gary okay, when so we were busy doing right. that okay, so no 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 answer. no no it's just run us through quickly again it's the amarok and a toyota and, and a hilux, and, a hilux. Yeah. And, and maybe it's worth saying quickly colin is just to to go through the two class or the two pro primary classes because in, you're yeah. not running in the fia class no we're not which an fia class is the those are, the these pinnacle. are the cars that yeah. race at Dakar. Yeah, so, so our, we're running okay. in, in what's called Class T, yeah. which is essentially a class for cars that are, are more suited to local budgets and, and local capabilities. Okay. The, the primary difference being a solid rear axle, which is what the FIA cars, or certainly what, what the Toyotas grew out of, yeah, but, right. but Class T caters to that, and it's, it's very well supported including the works Neil Woolrich Ford team. That's right, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's very competitive. Neil's kids are running in, in that. Yeah. Kids. Oh. Yeah. His children, Son. who are adults by yeah. now. Both sons, and they, they are both... They're quick, I, eh? Yeah, they're probably a bit, a bit too competent for our liking, to be honest. <laughs> they're, they're, they're really good, and, and I think going from strength to strength. Yeah. But now, hold on. This is a 1,000-kilometer race. Last year, Janil de Villiers won from Leroy Poulter, who is recovering and Leroy, anybody knows him, get a message out to him. We want to see him in a car soon. We know it's a long road to recovery. Any, um, any head injury is, it takes time, patience. And I know that racing drivers are not endowed with a lot of patience. I think Janil won by five or six seconds after a mm. thousand kilometers. Mm. Yeah. That's kind of cool, isn't it? No, it is. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. And, and you know, certainly, I guess there are lots of people hoping that, that Henk will give Janil a run for his money over the course of this year, which, which is far from uh, impossible, well, I must say. You know, know, look, he's you know, quick. Yeah. Uh, let's just, yeah. you know, the, one of the things that age and treachery brings over youth and exuberance is the, the lack of... Well, youth and exuberance tends to bring a propensity to bend the thing against immovable objects. But production are whining and whinging. Yes. Stuart. I just want to let everybody else out there know that that sign behind Colin said that says Black Jack. It is not our title sponsor. It's not the name of the studio. So I just want to get that out there. Black Jack is a pirate. Uh, the name of a pirate who <laughs> sailed the Pacific Ocean and laid plunder to many islands. Um, they made some movies about him. He's a great guy. But hold the space we we're working on some commercial arrangements Stuart thank you very much for your time good luck with your travels play well in the sand be happy and not grumpy thank you Colin and on that note Gary Colin oh get your baguettes ready because it's a French Grand Prix this weekend as well uh, oh, oh and oh, okay, oh and how do you go with Aston, um, what is it, Red Bull Racing, Aston Martin, Tag Honda. Heuer, powered by Honda. Yes, well done. Go Japanese. Cheers, guys.